Hello, welcome to Dharmesh Mehta YouTube channel. In today's Boost Your Basic series, we are going to learn about terminologies in the titrometric analysis. We are going to study what is titrometric analysis, what are the terms used here, and how is the setup. So let's get started. So first we are going to learn the term titration. So this is the definition of titration. That is, a measured amount of solution of unknown concentration is added to a known volume of second solution until the reaction between them is just complete. The concentration of unknown solution, that is the titer, can then be calculated. So in simple words, there are two solutions. First is the solution of unknown concentration and its a measured amount is present. So this is a first solution which has unknown concentration, but we know its amount, okay? Now the second solution is of known concentration, okay? So second solution is of known concentration and there is reaction taking place between two solutions. So why does this reaction is happening? So that we get to know the concentration of unknown solution that is the titer, which is calculated there. Okay, so this is titration procedure. Okay, now we are going to learn about analyte or the titer. So analyte is a weak base or acid and its structure is made from any compound that we converted into a strong acid or base. Now this substance is being titrated. Okay, so it is termed as titrant and the other name is titer. So analyte is the substance of unknown concentration whose concentration we are going to find out by the procedure of titration, okay? So let's move forward. So this next term is titrant. So what is titrant? It is a strong acid or base that is slowly added to analyte until it reaches any visible change in color of solution under observation. So titrant, its uh, concentration is known to us and it may be a strong acid or base which is slowly added to our analyte and there is reaction taking place. So it, the reaction is taking place until any visible change of color of solution is observed. As soon as the change of color is observed, we stop adding the titrant to the analyte, okay? The next term is indicator. It is a pH marker added to the analyte. So it is present with analyte, which triggers a change in color. So we understand the reaction is reached to its equilibrium and it should have a weaker acid or base concentration than analyte. So its acid or base concentration should be lesser than the analyte, okay? So it is selected according to the analyte. So it facilitates to understand the reaction has reached the equilibrium. Now we are going to learn about titration apparatus. So in this picture, you can see the titration apparatus. This is the stand present and a clamp to which a burette is attached. In the burette, we have titrant, okay? Its concentration is known. And in the conical flask, we have analyte, which is also known as titrant or titer. Along with analyte, we have here pH indicator, okay? That is indicator is present with analyte over here. So titrant is added in the burette and we note the initial reading of the burette then we start the reaction by adding titrant in the conical flask slowly slowly we add the titrant so until a visible change is seen in the conical flask as soon as we see the visible change we stop adding titrant further and then we get final reading of the burette so we get the burette reading by subtracting final reading minus the initial reading. Now this reading is used for further calculation and after calculating we get the concentration of analyte over here. 
okay so this is the whole setup of titration apparatus now you may get confused between titrant and titrant okay so how to understand this okay we know titrant is ending with t and titrant is present in tube let's call burette a tube so titrant is ending with t and it is in tube so here you can understand titrant in the burette and if we get titrant or titer it is the analyte okay so next we are going to learn about equivalence point this is the point at which reaction is complete which reaction the reaction between the titer and titrant okay so it is the point at which reaction is complete so it is called as equivalence point or the theoretical or stoichiometric end point okay these are the three names of the same term okay you have to remember the alternative names also in the question they may ask equivalence point or theoretical point or stoichiometric end point the definition remains same for all the three terms so now we have studied the reaction is completing at equivalence point but how to detect this equivalence point can be detected by some physical change produced by the sander solution itself so here they are talking about titrant which is present in the burette so itself it is changing so example is faint pink color formed by the potassium permanganate so potassium permanganate is used as titrant and itself it has color which is changed into faint pink color so it can be used as a indicator to analyze that the reaction is complete the second way is by addition of auxiliary reagents so these are indicators we are going to learn about this indicators in the further slide and the third is by some other physical measurement a uh, example of this is potentiometric analysis the next definition is the point at which visible change occur is called as end point so we are getting a visible change and it can be detected by our eyes and this is called as end point of reaction now ideally the end point of the reaction and equivalence point of the reaction should be same okay but in practical method it does not remain same a small difference is usually observed and this difference is called as titration error and this titration error should be as minimal as possible now we are going to learn about examples of indicators which are used so this is the table first column we have indicator then its color on the acidic side then its color on basic side and the range of color change okay so first indicator is methyl violet in the acidic side means when it is present in acidic solution it will give a yellow color but when it is present in basic Con, uh, conditions or basic solution its color is violet and uh, its change of color is in the range of ph 0 to 1.6 okay next is bromophenol blue in the acidic solution it's yellow in the basic solution it is blue and range of color change is 3 to 4.6 third is methyl orange its color on acidic side is red and its color on basic side is yellow and the range is 3.1 to 4.4 fourth we have methyl red it is red in acidic ph yellow in basic ph and range is 4.4 to 6.2 now the next is litmus we have this present in litmus paper as well as litmus solution so its color on acidic side is red its color on basic side is blue and the range is 5 to 8 next we have bromothymol blue its color in acidic solution will be yellow in the basic solution it will be blue and range is 6 to 7.6 next we have phenol next we have phenolphthalein 
it's color on acidic side is colorless and on basic side it will show a pink color and the range is 8.3 to 10 lastly we have alizarin yellow its color on acidic is yellow and on basic side is red and the range of color changes 10.1 to 12 so indicators are selected according to the analyte and according to the this range of color change now we are going to solve this question from the topic the question is which of the following titrant is self indicator and the options are option a kmno4 option b potassium dichromate option c ceric ammonium sulfate option d both a and c and the answer is option d both a and c now this is the image of potassium permanganate that is kmno4 and this is image of ceric ammonium sulfate now you can see the titrate itself is having a color so there is no need to add a indicator to the analyte and the titrate itself is acting as an indicator so this are called as self indicators so both potassium permanganate and ceric ammonium sulfate are self indicators thank you